and welcome back to Immunology, The War Is Over, Season 2. Today, we have a very exciting episode that is going to blow your mind. It's all about toll-like receptors. In this episode, we're going to cover what on earth is a toll-like receptor, what does this molecule have in common with a famous fast food restaurant, and how are these molecules showing up in your clinical practice? I think you're going to love this episode, and if you are enjoying this series, I wanted to let you know that I will soon be releasing another series over on my website, Transplant Immunology, The Peace Talks Begin. If that's something you need in your life, you can check out all the details using the link below. Okay, so the toll-like receptors. Given what I've told you so far in this series about the adaptive immune system, you'd be forgiven for thinking that T cells call the shots, especially those T helper cells which orchestrate the immune response at large. But when we discussed how antigens are presented to T cells back in season one, we saw that the T cell required particular cytokines and co-stimulatory molecules in order to get in the zone and mount any response at all. And so the T cell isn't truly in charge. It's whatever is creating those cytokines and co-stimulatory molecules that's pulling the strings. So who calls the shots? And the answer is the toll-like receptors. These belong to a wider group of immune molecules known as pattern recognition receptors, or PRRs. Of course, they're not the only pattern recognition molecules, there are many others, but toll-like receptors are the most famous. These pattern recognition molecules are the eyes and ears of our immune system. For the most part, toll-like receptors are located on cells with antigen-presenting capabilities. Which makes sense, right? Being able to pull those T-cell strings with cytokines and co-stimulatory molecules means that they need to be placed on the cells which are going to interact with the T-cells. And as the eyes and ears of the immune system, these toll-like receptors are looking out for specific signals known as PAMPs and DAMPs. PAMPs stand for pathogen-associated molecular patterns. Examples in bacteria would be lipopolysaccharide and flagella. And in the case of viruses, the toll-like receptor is looking for RNA, the genetic material. DAMPs, on the other hand, are damage-associated molecular patterns. These represent tissue damage or injury, so even if there's no infection present, the toll-like receptor can detect abnormal molecular patterns arising from damaged cells. In this case, the toll-like receptors spark an immune response which enables clearance of that abnormal host tissue. So toll-like receptors are expressed within antigen-presenting cells and they're on the lookout for PAMPs and DAMPs. In humans, there are 10 toll-like receptors that have been identified and each is on the lookout for a different molecular structure. And depending on whether the toll-like receptor was designed to look for extracellular or intracellular molecular patterns, it can be placed on the cell surface or inside the cell within endosomes. So the toll-like receptor eyes and ears are everywhere. Each toll-like receptor is arranged as two molecules brought together. That might be two of the same molecule, a homodimer, or two different molecules, a heterodimer. And the varied combination of the toll-like receptors helps with diversity, being able to pick up on different molecular patterns. I mentioned before that toll-like receptors have something in common with a famous fast food restaurant, the one with the golden arches. Toll-like receptors bound to their ligand or molecular pattern take on an M-like configuration. And when I read about this, it made me smile. Have you ever been travelling abroad? You get off the plane, you're in the taxi to your hotel, and you look out the window. One of the first things that you'll come across anywhere on planet Earth are those golden arches. Doesn't matter where you go, as a visitor to a foreign land, it's only a matter of time before those golden arches appear. And I imagine this experience to be similar for those little bacteria or viruses who decide to travel into our bodies. They too encounter the golden arches pretty promptly. Except in this case, the toll-like receptor arches are not going to extend a McCafe welcome, but instead they will coordinate deliberate and ruthless 
annihilation. And they'll do this by changing the intracellular signaling of those antigen-presenting cells to one that is pro-inflammatory and gets both the innate and adaptive immune systems fired up. Now, we said before that the toll-like receptors are placed on both the surface and inside the antigen-presenting cell. Those on the surface will be geared towards detecting extracellular organisms such as bacteria, whilst toll-like receptors on the inside of the cell, inside endosomes, will detect genetic material from intracellular organisms such as viruses. When they come into contact with the molecular pattern they were looking for, they will change their shape into the golden arch configuration, and this makes them able to bind to an adapter protein inside the cell. There are different adapter proteins involved, which lead to various downstream signaling pathways. One of the adapter proteins is known as MIDE88, but many others have been discovered. So these signaling pathways are divided into MIDE88 dependent and MIDE88 independent. None of that really matters too much, except to say that different adapter proteins will trigger different downstream signaling and different transcription factors in order to produce cytokines and co-stimulatory molecules, which pull those T-cell strings and create an immune response appropriate for the organism in question. Now, it's not important to memorize the exact toll-like receptor for every molecular pattern out there. You can look that up if you need to. But there are a few key toll-like receptors that I guarantee have been showing up in your clinical practice and I wanted to introduce them to you. Have you ever managed gram-negative sepsis? You know the type that causes septic shock and a pretty ropey ICU admission? If so, you have already become acquainted with toll-like receptor number four. This is the most famous toll-like receptor and for good reason. We knew for the longest time that bacterial lipopolysaccharide drove gram-negative sepsis, but we never knew why until we discovered TLR4. Basically, lipopolysaccharide binds to a molecule known as MD2, and this complex binds to TLR4. And TLR4 is responsible for the potent immune response which follows. If you didn't have TLR4, you wouldn't have the gram-negative sepsis response. So, toll-like receptor 4 molecules are the eyes and ears for lipopolysaccharide. And the next time you're resuscitating your gram-negative sepsis patient and you're dialing up the noradrenaline, you'll know exactly who is responsible for this. Gram-negative sepsis aside, the other place we see toll-like receptors in our clinical practice is within a topical agent known as imiquimod or Aldara. This is used for the management of solar keratosis, other superficial skin cancers, and in the treatment of genital warts. And its mechanism of action involves TLR7. Imiquimod is a TLR7 agonist. So when it's applied to the skin, it activates TLR7 within antigen presenting cells nearby and in doing so promotes a T-cell response against those abnormal cells. Isn't that fascinating? And it's not over yet. Another place you'll see toll-like receptors is in vaccinations. Oh yes, vaccination medicine has never been more front of mind and toll-like receptors are all the rage in this space. Vaccines, of course, contain antigens which represent various organisms. However, just placing a piece of an organism into your arm doesn't guarantee a winning immune response. And for this reason, vaccines contain adjuvants in order to promote the immune response to the vaccine. Previously, this was done purely by agents such as aluminium compounds and emulsions that would hold the antigen in place for longer giving the immune system more exposure to the antigen. The so-called depot effect. Modern vaccines still use these agents for the depot effect, but they may also add molecules specifically designed to get a rise out of those toll-like receptors. Now that we know that toll-like receptors are pulling the T-cell strings, this makes so much sense. If you want to get a rise out of the immune system, you're going to have to press those toll-like receptor Buttons. And there are a couple of vaccines currently in use which use toll-like receptors in this way. A famous example is the cervical cancer vaccine. 
Another is the recombinant shingles vaccine, which is the non-live version of this vaccine. Both of these vaccines make use of a molecule that mimics lipopolysaccharide, but is far less potent. This molecule, known as MPL, is extracted from Salmonella species and it interacts with toll-like receptor 4 in the exact same way as lipopolysaccharide would, except it's a thousand times less potent. So it tickles the TLR4, but it doesn't lead to septic shock. So in that way, it's handy for use in vaccinations. Now, what you'll notice here is that these two vaccines I mentioned are directed against viruses. But we're using a bacterial molecule to boost the immune response. And that's okay. It works beautifully. We still have the viral antigen inside the vaccine. And this can be presented to T-cells on the MHC2 molecule. So the specific immunity is going to be directed against the viral peptide. But at the same time, this bacterial molecule, MPL, has stimulated TLR4 in order to get those pro-inflammatory cytokines revved up and produce a T helper 1 response against the virus, which means that we'll develop immunological memory to this virus for future. And so that was the toll-like receptors. These little guys may actually be my new favorite part of the immune system. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and it helped your studies. And if you are interested in diving deeper into the immune system with all things transplant related, be sure to follow the link below to get all the details of our brand new course, Transplant Immunology, The Peace Talks Begin. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon for some more higher learning. Bye.